Follow along with this video um, if you need help with the homework number three, which is to add a method to the grid class in order to make sure we can click on the boxes in our grid to have them change color. So again, a class doesn't care if you're making one item, an array of objects, um, a 2D array of objects. It just cares about the specific object made. So I'm going to make a new method. I'm going to call it clickable. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if um, the mouse is um, between the left edge of the rectangle, so that's x, and the right edge, which is x plus 50, um, the left edge plus the width. So if mouse x is greater than x and mouse x is less than x plus 50. I'm going to nest another conditional inside to do the same thing for the, um, the mouse y along the height of the box. So between the top of the box y, the bottom of the box y plus 50. And it doesn't matter what the value of x and y are in this case, as long as you know the mouse is between whatever y is at the time and y plus the height. So if mouse y is greater than um, y and mouse y is less than y plus 50. So um, as mentioned in class, right now there is no, the default fill is um, doesn't exist. Um, we probably want to put that in so the fill won't be applied to subsequent um, shapes that are not the clickable shape because there is no default fill. We really do need some sort of default fill. Um, so in this case, the easiest thing to do would be to make a, um, an integer variable for the color and we'll just do um, black and white. So if the starting color is white as it's been, so that would be int, I'll call it C for color and then set C equal to 255, that's white. Then here I can use C for the fill. And so if this method is called, and we're going to call it in a mouse press method, um, actually I'll demonstrate why we can't call it just in um, void draw, but um, so if this method is called, then we'll change the value of C to zero. So that's black. Um, I can see by this red underline, um, I need another curly bracket. I've closed the curly bracket here. And for the mouse x conditional, this one right now is closing the clickable method. So I'm going to close another one. And back over here, I can call boxes i j dot, what did I call it? Clickable? Clickable. So now it's just working if I mouse over, which is totally fine. Actually quite, you know, something oddly satisfying about this. If I want to change it so I actually have to click, then instead of calling this method here, I'm going to call it in, remember this closes, draw. I'm going to write void mouse pressed. And then I still need those nested for loops because I can't call any methods on a single or um, all the array of box objects without those two nested for loops. I could call it again on just one of them. Um, I could say boxes zero, zero dot clickable. Remove it from here. But then I'd only be able to click on. Hmm oops, extra bracket there, I would only be able to click on that first box. None of the rest would work. So I'm going to again copy Command C, paste Command V, change those zeros to I, J, close those curly brackets, hitting Command Tab to auto format. So now you actually have to click inside each one. Um, there's some variations you could do here if you wanted to make sure you could click them back.
you could include another conditional statement nested inside. You could say something like, if C equals equals, two equal signs to check for equality, 255, change to black, else, so otherwise for any other case, so for example, if C is already zero, um, set C equal to 255, don't forget to close that curly bracket. Again, I'm Command-T to auto-format so you can see the proper indentation. So now, if I do that, I can click them back and forth between white and black. Other variations, you could make three different variables, R, G, and B, and set them random and reset them to random values here. So if you wanted to do that, you could say, let's do int R, int G, B, give them some random values. So R equals random between 0 and 255. Just to save myself the time, copy, paste, paste, change this to G, change this to B. So each one of those, um, oh, that's why. I was wondering why the auto formatting looks so odd. There we go. Um, oh, I'm getting an error message because I made these integers. Um, I'm going to give you a moment to think about why this might be a mistake to remember what data type I need if I'm going to use the random function. Have you thought of float? It is. It's float. So I need to make these all float. And then here, I could just take, um, I'm going to get rid of that um, if else. I could say r. Um, equals random. Actually, I can just copy this again. Mm -hmm. So just this will only again work if it's in um, you're calling the method clickable inside void mouse press because you only want it happen once each time. Otherwise, it will happen continuously in a very um, 60 times a second changing color ish kind of way that might not be the thing you're looking for. So now, oh, oops, I need to change this. We need to use r comma g comma b. So random red, green, blue values. So now, and when you change them, it will change each individually. So surprise. Um, if you want to have it less completely random, you could pick, um, you could sort of constrain some of the values, like maybe none of them will have that much red ever. You get a more um, monochromatic look to your work. But this isn't necessary. This is just a nice to know if you'd like to take it to the next step.